Now, welcome to today's webinar, uh, where we will be talking about exporting mentions to uncover new insights, unpacking our latest feature. Uh, just a little bit of housekeeping before we really get started. Um, please put any questions that you have in the Q&A box. Um, we will get to them at the end of the session. Let us know if you can't hear or see, um, and the webinar will be recorded. So if you want to watch it again afterwards or share it with any colleagues, um, we'll be making the recording available afterwards. So our speakers today, um, hello, I'm Kat. I head up the marketing for Altmetric. Um, on the session with me, I have my colleague Terry, who works with us at Digital Science, um, and Ewan, who is the founder of Altmetric. And here's a brief intro to what we'll cover. So we'll start with a quick recap of where we are in terms of Altmetrics and Altmetric uh, to date. Um, we'll take a quick look at the new feature and, and talk about why we've built it. Um, Terry will then give us an overview of the institutional view and how institutions might like to use this cool new tool that's now available. Um, and you will do a bit of a digging into the publisher's perspective um, and useful ways to use this data there. Um, and then we'll wrap up with the Q&A. So, uh, where were we? Um, all metrics have come a long way in the last five years. So if you think, or well, even longer than five years now, actually time flies, um, right back to 2010, when the Altmetrics Manifesto was first released and the idea of Altmetrics um, really kind of came about um, and this idea of capturing the online activity that goes on surrounding research outputs and offering something alternative to traditional citation-based metrics. Um, in 2011, Biomed Central actually became the first publisher to add the Altmetric badges to their article pages. Um, and then from there, uh, in 2012, we released the first version of the Altmetric Explorer, um, the database product that many of you will be familiar with. New versions were released in 2014 for institutions, um, and then an upgrade to both the institutional and the publisher version in 2016, and then earlier this year in spring 2017. At the same time, um, we at Altmetric certainly have been involved in a lot of ongoing industry initiatives. Um, so many of you will have heard about the NISO um, standards initiative that originally uh, kicked off in 2013 um, and resulted in a set of standards, which you can now find on our websites, where we're, we're much more transparent about how we collect the data um, and all of the things that go on in the background. Um, we've been involved in organizing the 1 a.m., 2 a.m. Uh, series of conferences. Uh, this year we're looking forward to 4 a.m. in Toronto um, and those conferences have provided a really great venue for bringing the community together to talk about why do we need all metrics, why do we have them and what should we be doing with them. Um, also in 2014 we launched our first ever top 100 list um, which is a really nice way of showcasing some of the research that's had the most attention. Um, in 2015 we built book metrics with Springer um, and this was really our first venture into altmetrics for, for things beyond articles in a big way. Um, and also in 2016, we launched the annual research grant. Um, so there's been a lot going on, a lot has changed, um, and really this all speaks to how the way that we think about this data has evolved, um, and the different ways that people, certainly our users, are now wanting to apply it. Um, as I mentioned, we've now gone moved way beyond the article. Um, of course, you can find the altmetric donut on thousands of journal articles. Um, but also now um, we're moving into collecting the metrics of books, um, for data sets on, on places like Figshare, um, and even for websites, so where something has a canonical URL, we're now able to capture the attention around that. So there's huge scope for really understanding how people are interpreting or interacting with your research, whether it's a journal article or some other form of research output. Um, and we're talking about a lot of data. Um, a lot of the work that we do at Altmetric is really around uh, making sure all of this data is flowing through the system correctly, that everything is um, flowing smoothly, um, and that things are being assigned to the right research outputs. At the moment, we're seeing about 18,000 unique outputs shared each day, um, over 150,000 new mentions a day. Our API is getting over 15 million calls a day, and we're tracking over 11,000 blogs and over 2,500 news outlets. So this is a huge amount of information that is flowing into the system every day. Um, and that we're working to collate and to categorize to enable you to search and filter and really make sense out of it. Um, and of course, as these have gone on, more and more diverse groups of people have started using this data. Um, this slide uh, just gives a bit of an overview of some of the people that we work with at Altmetric. 
So you can see it's a mixture of publishers, universities, funders, nonprofit organizations, and all of them have different questions that they're trying to answer about how their research um, is achieving a bigger reach, which audiences it's being picked up by, how it's being reused, um, and really what people think of it. And then what they can do um, to improve it or to help it shape the future of their research programs. And these people are really asking these new questions. So, you know, who is it that is talking about our work the most? Um, who are the key influencers in a specific discipline or a certain space? Um, should we therefore be adjusting our marketing or our outreach strategy if we're not quite hitting the people we want to be? Researchers are starting to ask a lot more, how can I find this evidence of engagement from audiences that I, or certainly my funders, the people I, I'm asking for the money, um, the people that they care about, how can I really get into that data um, and bring out some meaningful stories from it? Um, and then also similar to that is what should I be highlighting to management or other stakeholders? So whether you're a university press wanting to demonstrate the value of your activity to the university that supports you, um, a researcher wanting to talk to your line manager about a recent publication and, and showcase um, some engagement that you've been doing, um, or an institution who are wanting perhaps to demonstrate to their alumni um, or to others in their peer group about the expertise that's within your institution. These are the kinds of things that Altmetrics can help you do. Um, but the key is that the detail really is in the data, and this is really why we've built this new feature. Before, the Explorer was doing a great job of letting you search and see what was in there. Um, and the new Explorer, some of you will be familiar with, shows this image that you can see in the top left here, this attention over time graph. From there, you can see the different sources that have mentioned the research. And then you can click to narrow down and see the actual text of the mentions. But what we're now enabling you to do is to export those mentions. So now, all of a sudden, you can see um, an Excel file of the actual outlet, um, so which news outlet was it, which tweeter was it, which blogger was it, um, and whether it's a mention title, we're also showing that as well. Um, and you and Terry will go into this in a bit more detail, um, but you can really start to see, okay, which news outlets are talking about our work the most, who are the influencers, and whether it's a title, you can also start to see in what context is our work being shared or referenced. So with that, I will hand over to Terry. Um, and he will talk about the institutional view. Okay, thank you very much, Kat. And uh, do scream at me if uh, you can't hear me. Um, I will just switch to sharing my screen. Lovely. Uh, okay, and hopefully that one there. Okay, so yeah, as Kat mentioned, um, you know, I, I visit lots of institutions uh, and I hear lots of ways that institutions would like to be able to use altmetric data uh, in their kind of analysis of how their research is being received and discussed. So there's a, a number of things that people have wanted to be able to do with the platform that, um, you know, they, they can see the data is there, uh, but actually getting it out and putting it into other systems um, has always been uh, a little bit tricky. So. For example, uh, if I wanted to see all of the policy documents for this particular school um, in my institution, um, it's quite easy for me to actually view that on screen. I can just select that school. Uh, so now I'm limiting my results to just the stuff from this school in my institution. Um, I can then open the results analysis screens that Kat mentioned. So here's my timeline of mentions. Um, I can adjust my timeline. Um, and I can choose um, which sources I want to look at so I can see when those policy document mentions occurred. And I can um, click into the mentions tab um, and I can choose to just see um, what those policy document mentions were, um, which papers they cited, uh, when those mentions were made by which body and so on. But to actually record this information in your own um, portfolio of evidence was a rather uh, cumbersome and time-consuming business. So now, simply by adding uh, this ability to export the spreadsheet, uh, as Kat mentioned, uh, it becomes so much easier to do that. So uh, I'm just downloading my spreadsheet there, my CSV file. I'll open that up into Excel and start sharing Excel, hopefully. Uh, la -la -la, let's get the right one up, there we go. So this is the the uh, Excel file that uh, Altmetric provides for me. Um, so I'll just adjust some things to make it easier to read. Um, so 
you know, I chose in the Altmetric platform uh, to just look at policy document mentions. So uh, all of them have the same mention type here. Uh, but I've got the date and the timestamp of the mention. I can see which body uh, the mentions have come from. Uh, I can see the name of the actual document um, that includes the citation. I importantly have got the URL for each of those policy documents so I can easily at my own leisure go through um, these URLs, opening up the PDFs, deciding for myself whether these are significant mentions that I want to record as evidence of impact um, or whether they're just um, uh, a less important mention, for example, um, my publication was included in a literature review alongside 700 other publications. Um, and there I've also got the details of the outputs, the title of the research output, and the journal it was in, and so on. Um, so it's very easy for me um, if I want to, to um, uh, grab this data that I want um, to get rid of the fields that my um, my own uh, system for recording evidence of impact doesn't need. I can just delete any of those. Um, and I can grab the fields that I do need uh, and upload them into my own system or copy and paste them, whatever I have to do. So tick box number one, can I get the details of all the policy document mentions for the publications in my department or institution or whatever? The answer is now yes, and that's very nice. Um, similarly, if I um, go back to um, looking at the website, So if I now instead I decide to look at uh, news mentions, for example, um, then one of the things we've been asked a lot um, is, you know, there are some news sources that matter to me and there are some news sources that really don't. Um, and I would love to be able to just pick and choose the news sources that I get mentions for. Um, so again, we can do that. Um, let me again change the thing I'm sharing with you. With that one. So this is now uh, a spreadsheet of uh, news mentions. Um, and I can very easily, uh, just in Excel, uh, apply a filter um, to uh, all of the fields here. So I can then go through and look at the different uh, news outlets that have mentioned my institution's research. Uh, I can deselect a lot of them. Uh, and then I can just add in the ones that I'm actually interested in. So if we come down to things beginning with the, for example, to get to some decent newspapers, uh, there we go. So if I just want stuff that's been mentioned in The Guardian and in The Independent, there is my simple list of just the mentions that I want. And I throw away all those mentions from US public radio, sorry, people in the US. Um, Similarly, uh, I could do it the other way around. So I could just show all of the news outlets that I'm not interested in, and I could delete those from my spreadsheet, and then that would leave behind um, just the ones that I'm interested in. So tick box number two, can I limit the news mentions to just the news sources that matter to me? Uh, yes, you absolutely can do that these days. Um, now we can really get slightly more clever as well, um, because something that people also ask for is, can I, categorize these news mentions. So I mentioned that a lot of these news sources are you know, TV and radio station websites, we have newspapers in there, uh, we have news magazines, we have subject magazines like Scientific American and so on. So people ask us how they can um, limit their results to just particular types of news outlet. Um, there's good news and bad news there. The good news is that you can do that, the bad news is it requires a little bit of manual effort on your behalf. Um, so if I switch to another spreadsheet, um, this is one I created earlier, as they say. So what I did was I downloaded um, the news mention spreadsheet as before. I threw away all of the columns apart from uh, the actual names of the outlets. Um, and then I used a little feature uh, that's uh, very useful. I use it all the time in my previous job as a librarian, and that's removing duplicates. So instead of a list of uh, that repeats or, uh, each newspaper every time it was mentioned, uh, I just get a unique list of the news outlets that were mentioned and I can sort those alphabetically. And then if I have the time and the patience, I can go through these and I can decide um, on these other classifications. So these are my own classifications that I've created for these news outlets. 
So I've broken things down into the country or region uh, where they're published or that they try to cover, uh, any subject area that they try to focus in on, uh, and I've tried to categorise things according to whether they are a TV and radio station or a newspaper or a magazine or so on. Um, you know, this is very much a subjective thing to do. So, you know, I don't think it's really reasonable to expect all metric themselves to come up with these categorizations, um, but you can certainly do that for yourself, and so you can go through uh, a, an exported list like this, and you can decide how to categorize the different news sources, which ones to throw away, which ones to focus in on. Um, and then, of course, what you'd really want to be able to do is to bring those into your mentions spreadsheet. So, uh, another trick that I learned when I was uh, a librarian, um, when I used to play around with usage statistics all the time, uh, was a thing called VLOOKUP. Um, so, what I can do uh, next to the uh, outlet is I can put in, uh, let's say, a column for outlet type. I can't type both, that's always been my, down, my downfall. Um, and I can use this function called VLOOKUP to bring in the categorization that I've put in my other spreadsheet. So I'd say, okay, I want to look up Insurance Newsnet in my other spreadsheet. Not that one, that one, um, which you can't see, but trust me. And then from that, I want to bring in the fourth column, uh, which I put in as the type. So if I just want to limit things to uh, one particular type, uh, I can do that. So it's a very horrible looking formula. Um, and it's failed miserably. Great, really, some of that worked. Okay, so where I've actually gone in and put a category, uh, it is now finding those categories for me. Uh, where I haven't done that yet, uh, it'll be putting in um, zeros and I'll need to go in and actually add those extra categories. But again, because I've put these output types uh, as, as a filter, I can now say, okay, I only want TV and radio stations. Or you can say the opposite, say, okay, I want everything apart from TV and radio stations. And again, that helps you to filter through your results and narrow down to just the research outputs that you want. Um, so that's third box ticks, ticked. The fourth thing that people ask me, and this is my final one, I promise you, is, you know, say you're an early career researcher and I'm starting to, to publish uh, in a field or I'm trying to understand a field that I'm starting to research into, what are the Twitter accounts that I should be following um, that talk about research in my field? What blogs um, should I be um, subscribing to, following, commenting on? Which news sources should I be reading uh, to keep up to date in my field? Um, and you know, previously we've just given you mention by mention and it's been really hard for you to do that kind of analysis. Now, once I've got a spreadsheet of mentions like this, uh, I can just insert a pivot table. Uh, again, if you don't know enough pivot tables, Google it, it'll change your life. Um, so I can put in, uh, I want rows for the different news outlets. I want to count how many of each newslet, news outlet have been mentioned. And then I want to change my sort order from alphabetical order to the number of times that each one has been mentioned. So there, straight away, for this group of uh, publications from my department, I can see which news sources uh, are mentioning uh, my department's research most often. Um, I can change that, I, I can do a different export. So um, I could either now export um, Twitter mentions and do a pivot table for that. I could do um, uh, blogs and do the same kind of pivot table analysis for that. Or indeed, uh, back in Altmetric, I could uh, do an export of all the different mention types, and then I can add a filter to my pivot table uh, where I do that limit there in my pivot table so I can download all of the data at once and then analyze different aspects of it uh, in Excel. So that was a bit of a hands-on demo, rather rushed, but uh, we will, in fact, we published a blog post about this recently uh, and we'll publish another one soon that goes into a little bit more detail. Um, and I can see there's lots of questions popping up as well. <laughs> yeah, Terry, we might just jump in and do some questions for you now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, sure. Um, one uh, was, can we get a list of the scenarios you're demoing? <laughs> Absolutely, yeah, we can, we can send that around, no problem. Um, the other was, um, what are the types of policy documents that are included in the Explorer? Okay, um, I mean, the, the sorts of policy documents we have are, 
basically freely available PDF grey literature that include recommendations, policy documents, statements, recommendations, and so on. So these can be from um, government departments, official publications. These can be NGOs, like the World Health Organization. These can be charities. Um, so we have a lot of them in kind of medicine and healthcare, a lot in business and economics and finance, uh, a lot on the environment and so on. Um, and we're always asking for recommendations from institutions and others uh, for other bodies that we should cover. And then as long as we can harvest their PDFs, uh, we can text mine the references uh, out of them um, and add in those mentions for them. So it's not a hard and fast categorization. It's whatever people find useful. Great. Um, a question that I think came from near the beginning of where you were presenting when you were first pulled out the um, mentions for the research that you were looking at. Um, mm -hmm. Could the API be used to do exports like that? Uh, that's probably one that's better for you. And I think a new version of the API is going to be coming out uh, later on this year or beginning of next year, will it, Ewan, that will allow you to do this by more automated means? Yep. I, I can say that's right. So you can do it by the API now. It's uh, not as easy as you know, one single call. What we are doing is making sure that everything you can do in the Explorer with one click, you can do with the API with one call, or at least that's the intention. So you can do it now in a more roundabout way. We're going to make it easier as well in the future. Okay, perfect. Um, you and shall we move on to the publisher's perspective now? Yes. Uh, just share my screen. Can you all see what I'm sharing? Yeah, looks good. Great. So I'm going to uh, cover a lot of what Terry just said, kind of from the, the publisher's perspective. Um, obviously, there's a lot of overlap between the kinds of things you might want to do as a publisher and uh, as an institution, which is good. So everything Terry showed you is still very relevant. Um, just generally, before I get into that, I should say, and, and this kind of follows on from that API question, but this isn't the kind of only thing we're going to be doing with the mention reporting functionality and exporting. Um, we've just kind of started off with this as the most flexible in some ways option in that you can take the data and, you know, everyone has their own questions and be it uh, an institution or a publisher or even across different publishers. Um, so we want to be able to give you the data to answer those questions yourself with, with Excel and some kind of data, uh, data foo, if you like. Um, but ideally, we want you to be able to answer those questions very quickly in the Explorer as well. So it's an ongoing process. We're going to be iterating on this. We're particularly keen on hearing from you um, which questions you want to have answered uh, and if there's any particular reports you're interested in, and then we can prioritize them first. So on that note, I'm going to show some examples from a publisher's perspective uh, using this mention exporting and, and also the pivot tables that, uh, that Terry mentioned. So here's the first one. This is one we, we have been asked before. Uh, it's quite a common one, especially around the communications offices of publishers, but what just generally what's our coverage like, especially compared to our competitors uh, or in specific geographies. So one we got quite a lot is, okay, well, uh, traditionally, we've been good at UK coverage, uh, and these other people have been good at US coverage. Is that still the case? Can we track, you know, any kind of interventions we do there? Um, and also, Terry covered this one already, so I won't spend a lot of time on it. But you know, specifically in certain outlets, so not necessarily across all two and a half thousand news things that uh, news outlets that Almetric tracks, but maybe the hundred or so uh, most important ones to a particular publisher. There was a question, I think about whether or not publishers can see uh, journal articles and other outputs from their competitors and the answer is yes you can in, in the Explorer for Publishers app. So it's different for institutions, we don't, uh, for publishers because everything that you publish as a publisher is kind of public by definition, it appears in a particular journal, we can collect that information. We don't make um, affiliations of uh, authors for a particular institution available through the Explorer at the moment. It's only, you know, for you at your institution, you can see your own papers, but other people generally can't. So the way you do it, um, and, and here I'm going to look, take the first case of comparing to a competitor is, first of all, you can use the publisher name filter within the Explorer. 
if you haven't seen this already, this is the box that pops up if you click on advanced search. So you can enter in the names of publishers in the publisher name field there. So I've filled it in already with Royal Society of Chemistry. And as you type it, kind of gives you the suggestion. So I um, started typing AC and it's going to auto complete to ACS. So in this case, I'm putting papers from uh, the Royal Society of Chemistry and from the American Chemical Society published between the 1st of July, 2016 and the 1st of July, 2017. And we'll go through the steps again as, as Terry showed you. So the, the articles come up, you can see all the donuts. You go to analyze mentions. And then on the mentions tab, there's this new export to CSV option. So I did that with my query and I get an Excel file like this. The only thing I've done differently here is what we don't currently do is export the publisher field. So you saw on the export uh, that Terry walked through, there was the journal and the DOIs and the mention names and this kind of thing. So what I've done for the purposes of this example is just added a column and it's just a quick formula that says if the DOI begins with um, 10, 10, 39, then it's an, uh, a Royal Society of Chemistry paper, otherwise it's a, uh, an ACS paper. So this is rough for the purposes of the demo. It's, it's uh, certainly not the, the best way to do it, but uh, for the purposes of this, it's fine. So I've done that, and now every mention belongs to either ACS or the Royal Society of Chemistry. And then if you use the pivot tables, like Terry showed you there, uh, we can start to kind of get these summary or, or aggregate statistics. So in this case, it's, it's a very simple set of filters. Um, I'm only really looking at two things. So one is um, what news outlet I mention is in. And the other thing is what publisher uh, is being mentioned by that news outlet. I've done something else here, which is I've filtered down to a particular set of, uh, of news outlets. So by default, all of them would be included or all of them that have mentioned at least one kind of chemistry related paper in those two publishers. Um, but just to keep things manageable here, I've, I've restricted it to uh, however many there are here, what about, uh, just over a dozen. And you do that by making it a filter, selecting the outlets you're interested in and then dragging it back into the kind of the rows area of the pivot table. This seems very complicated, I'm aware, even as I'm saying it, it it's, it's honestly not. It's worth kind of getting to grips with. It takes about five minutes to uh, do your first pivot table, and after that, it's pretty uh, self-explanatory. It's quite easy to, to uh, experiment with. So what can we see from this kind of table? What are the kind of the answers or the insights that you would want to pull out? Um, well, just looking at it, so I can see the first column is the name of the news outlet. The second column is how many um, stories are about an ACS paper, and then how many stories about a Royal Society of Chemistry paper. So first of all, is there anything odd or that jumps out immediately? Well, one is that the Washington Post apparently only talks about the American Chemical Society. It's never covered uh, a, a Royal Society of Chemistry paper. Uh, whereas this site, chemi.de, is the exact opposite. So maybe there's something odd there. Maybe uh, a journalist at the Washington Post needs to be added to a press contacts list somewhere. Uh, and, and vice versa for, for Kemi D. Um, yeah, sorry. Then looking a bit further, it's always important when you look at the metrics. So how would I interpret this? The first thing to remember is there's more papers coming out of the ACS than the Royal Society of Chemistry. Actually, looking at the raw number of stories probably isn't that useful. What we should really do is um, look at what the expected number might be. So context is always very important when you're using uh, metrics. In this case, uh, in the, the data set we were looking at, um, papers from the Royal Society of Chemistry made up about 17% of the total. So we could say, just for the purpose of this, all right, well, if um, say chemistry views here at the top has 154 stories about chemistry articles, we would expect 17% of them, so about 26, to be from the Royal Society of Chemistry. And actually 56 were. So they're overrepresented in that particular outlet. Just as a kind of sanity check, um, and this probably isn't surprising to those respective publishers, but so Chemical and Engineering News is run by ACS and it overwhelmingly covers ACS content. Chemistry World is run by the Royal Society of Chemistry and it's overwhelmingly Royal Society of Chemistry papers. So just uh, that's more of a, a proof, I suppose, that, that of what these, these kind of numbers represent. 
Um, there's some other interesting things. So, uh, for example, uh, the Daily Mail here in the UK isn't very patriotic. So it, it kind of is underrepresenting Royal Society chemistry papers and this kind of thing. So from that, just one pivot table, there's quite a lot of different questions uh, you can pull out and answer. Here's a different kind of example, um, and it's more about who is it that's interacting with content. So um, the big difference between being able to export mentions, which is the new functionality we've rolled out in the past month, and the previous functionality we had, which is more about seeing the numbers at a high level, is it's not just about how many news stories did I get or how many tweets or how many blog posts across a journal or across a publisher. It's also which bloggers, which tweeters, which news stories. And in the same way you can, uh, well, publishers do produce, you know, top five articles, like the most ones most talked about, it's possible to see who are the five tweeters talking to us about our content, which are the top blogs uh, in terms of the number of mentions that are talking about, you know, the articles in a particular subject area uh, or from a particular journal. So, as you said, it could be um, who's interacting with the content from our journal, like who are the people, uh, the subject area. And some of the reasons you might want to do that, um, first of all, maybe you're looking for opinionated research, who, uh, researchers who might be invited to actually write something, a perspective or an article, uh, potentially even reviewers, um, or certainly somebody who might be interested in submitting to, say, say a special issue. So here's an example of that. Um, this is looking by keywords. So in this case, um, I'm, I've typed an ice shelf to the Explorer. So I'm looking for someone or I'm interested in who is online that's talking about research related to the ice shelf. Uh, ice shelf um, issues like the Larson Sea ice shelf that recently uh, broke off in Antarctica. So I get back a lot of blog posts. You can see on the left hand side, this is the results in analyzed mentions, there's 269 blog posts uh, talking about this kind of research. Again, I export it to CSV. I can run it through a pivot table. On the right hand side there, where it says drag fields between the areas below, that's how the pivot table is set up. That's the kind of customization screen you see. Again, it's very simple. I'm just saying by rows, look for the outlet or author, which in this case is blog names. Uh, in the columns, I'm doing years. So that's from the, this happens automatically when you drag the uh, date published of the mention uh, into that box. And then the values are just the number of unique mentions. And now I can see for all of the blogs that have talked about research uh, with Ice Shelf in the title, um, the first column there, that's the name of the blog, and then the years, that's over time. So we have blog index that stretches back to, well, 2008 in this case. Um, so you can see how some blogs have been more popular earlier on, it's kind of peaked at different points, uh, which ones are the newer ones versus which ones are the older ones. And I can use this to go through because I have the links to the individual blog posts as well uh, and try and get a feel for who those bloggers are. So in this case, um, there's a few interesting ones. One is uh, at the top there, a, a couple of them are actually more newsy or publisher related. So um, the Carbon Brief, for example, is actually more of a news outlet than a, a, a single blogger. Um, but others around sceptical science, a few things they'll consider this kind of thing. Those, those are individual bloggers. Um, so an interesting one here, for example, is it turns out uh, recently the blog that has the most coverage of this kind of thing is this guesswork, Welcome Sci Blogs. Unfortunately, it's not an individual. It, it is literally invited contributions from experts uh, on a particular topic. But at the same time, it's a good way of getting into that uh, subject area. So, so they've done some of the legwork there in finding people who are uh, happy to write about this particular topic. Another example, uh, and my final one, and I'm not going to cover in a lot of detail because we do have a blog post about it um, at this link here. Alternatively, you can just go to the Elmetric blog, and I think it's the second or third post down. Um, but it's looking at which tweeters are talking about a particular journal the most. And it's certainly true that um, the most, well, you, you can read the blog post for more details, but the most uh, common tweeters tend to be, you know, things like uh, there's some automated accounts and bots and things that just tweet all 
research about a particular topic. So you do have to kind of discard them. I'd say like of the top 10 tweeters, if you pull it for a particular journal, you know, so it may be, uh, well, I would say three or four of them are probably the automated ones at the top. But the ones underneath that are interesting. So here I was looking at psychology journal, I think three different psychology uh, journals, or journals that publish psychology rather. So there was uh, PLOS One, uh, BJP and Schizophrenia Research. Uh, and it was interesting to see for each one who the kind of top tweeter was. Um, and it'd be interesting also to see if those journals are already aware of those people. In some cases, they're uh, uh, editors of other journals. Uh, in other ones here, they're um, uh, uh, like a university professor, uh, Alec Frobe, for example. All right, I think I'm going to wrap up there and hand back to Kat. Lovely. Thanks very much, Ewan. Um, we had a couple of questions. Um, one about news sources and whether or not they are all weighted equally towards um, when it comes to contributing to the elementary retention score. I can answer that one. So they don't contribute equally, no. We have a tiering system. Um, this is described in a little bit more detail on, in the help pages at help.allmetric.com. Uh, but essentially we have tier one sources which are kind of internationally recognized sources so that would be the Washington Post or the Guardian uh, uh, equally you know not just English language speaking but um, you know El Pais or Le Monde and things like that in France and we have tier two which are national titles so ones that are well known within a country or recognized within a country but not necessarily worldwide um, and then all the way down to tier four which is um, Kind of online only news sites where there's much less editorial input into into the stories that they publish and they contribute different amounts to the score okay great thanks very much Ewan. um if anyone has any other questions please do continue to drop them in the q a box and we'll go through them now um hannah has asked um is there a way to export twitter mentions and see what institution they're from or would this be a manual process um, Hannah, my understanding certainly is that you would need to go in and look at the Twitter bio of each tweeter um, and there would be a link in the export to enable you to do that, um, but it would be a manual process too. Um, so we don't quite have that level of information. The data that we have from Twitter is just what people put in their Twitter bios. You yeah, just, to and just to, to add there, Kat, I mean, I've looked at uh, the tweets for research published by lots of different institutions and, <clears throat> and done this kind of uh, pivot table analysis to see which Twitter accounts tweet that institution's research most. And it really is quite interesting that some institutions clearly seem to be making an effort to use uh, both institution-wide and departmental Twitter accounts to promote the institution's research. So you'll see in their top 10 or top 20 Twitter accounts that talk about that institution's research, several that have the name of the institution in the Twitter handle. Um, and then you'll look at another institution, which will typically have a lower level of attention overall, and there seems to be no kind of social media strategy going on at that institution, no institutional Twitter accounts that are tweeting about their work. So that's kind of a lesson learned for me if I were trying to promote my institution's research anyway. Okay, thanks, Terry, for the extra info there. Um, someone has asked about seeing, tracking the outputs, the attention for outputs from specific researchers. Um, I think it's probably easiest if I show you. Um, so hopefully you can now see, this is our Institutional Metric Explorer. Um, and when you're an institution and you work with us, we'll take you through um, a fairly straightforward implementation process to set up whatever departmental and author hierarchies you would like to see in your setup. Um, and what that enables you to do is, um, for example, you could come in here, um, you can then search, uh, so I've searched for humanities, so it will bring up any output titles that contain the word humanities, but also you can see here, you can now see the department from within your institution. Um, so if you wanted to look by department, you could do that. Um, you can search for names of authors within your institution. Um, so if we look at Katie here, um, this is all of Katie's research outputs with their attention. Um, and then we could click to save the search um, and then come into our save search list and set up a daily, a weekly or a monthly email alert. Um, and that would mean you would receive an email with all of the attention that Katie's papers have received. So you could set that up for whichever researchers you wanted to track the attention for. Um, this view here, if you didn't know the specific name of someone or you just wanted to have a bit of a look through, 
Um, here you would see all of your authors listed and obviously you could click into them to go back to that, that view of all the articles or the outputs that they have. Um, and the same for departments. So this is where we put your departmental hierarchies in um, to enable you to explore the data that way. Um, I hope that was helpful and answered that question. Um, I'm just going to stop my share because it makes it easier to see. I think someone might have put their hand up. While you do that, I should say, for a publisher perspective, so that's from a particular institution. The other way to do it is to search by ORCID. So um, if you're looking at a particular author or somebody outside your institution, you can do it that way as well. Obviously, they need to have set up ORCID and, and filled out the profile. Okay. Um, do we have any other questions? Kathy, sorry, I think you might have put your hand up, but I can't see where it's gone now. Um, so if you did have a question, please send it in. Um, if there are no more, um, could the news tier be shared as a CSV file? Um, that could be a useful categorization. Ewan, do you want to comment on that one? Yes, so that's one of the one of the interesting things is when we started using the functionality internally for demos and things, uh, not having the tier in the export was immediately a pain. So that is something we are probably going to add. That and the geography of uh, different sources and, and tweeters. So you can see very quickly, you know, US versus UK or Chinese or South American or wherever you want. Um, an interesting question that's just come in. So some of you um, might have heard about um, the Crossref event data that is currently in development. Um, you and um, someone was asking how uh, the data that we provide and the service that we provide compares to that. Are you able to speak a bit to that? Um, yeah. So there's some overlap. We so we're we're part of that initiative. We're on the kind of steering group for Crossref events data. Um, really, our intention is that there's a few different metric groups uh, collecting data, and, and there's some data we do that's unique to us. So the policy and the news and a lot of the blogs and things that's that's an metric thing. Um, but there's some data, if we think about Mendeley data, for example, um, that ideally we just get from one source. We, you know, as a community. Uh, can distribute it through one place. So that's ideally what we want to happen. Um, it's not quite there yet, but it's, it's getting there. What we will always do that's different to the cross events data, which is really a very raw feed of data, um, is try and add the enrichments on top of it. So, um, you know, things like the tiering, things like the Explorer, where we obviously visualize the data, the score, the context, uh, extra metadata about the publications, all this kind of thing. Um, finally, I suppose the main other difference is that the cross event data is only currently for things with the DOI because it's part of cross which is perfectly reasonable. Um, but we do need to also track uh, books, only have ISBNs, the websites, you know, things like physics research that appears on archive uh, and all these other kind of outputs that are um, outside of the DOI system. So we'll always be doing that differently as well. Okay, and one more question that's come in about citations. Um, I presume here the person asking the question you mean about um, kind of journal to journal citations. We do um, pull in data from Scopus. So when you're in the Explorer, um, if you click into an individual article, um, at that point we call the Scopus API and if there are citations for it, then a tab will appear on the details page for that item um, to show you the Scopus citations um, and a link through to the, to the Scopus search. Um, that is only within the actual explorer itself. Um, if you're a publisher or an institution with a Thomson Reuters Insights license, we're also able to show you the Web of Science citation data within the details pages as well. Um, so you can get to that within the explorer on a kind of item by item basis. Um, a question again about the altmetric score. Is it designed to correlate with something else? Um, I think my answer to that certainly would be that, like all metrics, they're really designed to be complementary to things like citations, um, and the score is really designed to kind of reflect the, the volume of attention and the likely reach of that attention. Um, you and Ontario, I don't know if you have anything to add? No, I think that it's pretty much that there's no good, or before the metric attention score, there wasn't a good way of representing attention, which is very distinct to citations or, or usage. Um, 
and that's where it came about because it was that that need to fill but it, it correlates sometimes by accident but it's certainly not designed to you know be a good way of measuring quality for example or even necessarily some types of impact of the paper it, it's about attention specifically okay thanks um karen the export to csv functionality so what you've seen you and, and terry using today is in the explorer now um so if you either have a license to it already or would like to find out about one um you would have access to that functionality straight away um and you should be able to find it in the analyze results section um if you already have access um, so i hope that's helpful there um are there any plans to provide emailed updates less often than monthly um or more often than monthly is that so every six months or custom um yes so kind of more enhanced reporting is definitely something that we plan to look at um you and any more detail you'd like to add uh no it's a good idea we didn't have that specifically on the roadmap but it's a good idea um yeah we should definitely uh, take that into consideration as well Okay, great. Um, well, thanks very much um, to both you and Terry and to everyone who's joined today. Um, if you do have any more questions, please feel free to reach out to us at um, info at altmetric.com. Um, we would be happy to chat and would, of course, love to give you more information about the Explorer if you'd be interested to talk about licensing it for your organization. Um, so thanks again for joining and we hope to speak to you soon. Bye.